What's up guys and welcome back to F1 2020. For those of you that like the business and, and kind of the behind the scenes style of stuff, we've got a special and exciting episode today because we have a long time until our next race. It is currently August 3rd and our next race is gonna be August 27th. So we have nearly the entire month off here and uh, I've got like a, a mid-season break. We've got a press interview coming up and all kinds of stuff. So uh, we're gonna invest a ton of money we're going to focus on, on building up our teams and, and seeing what we can do here, and I'm kind of excited about it, so hope you guys are too. Let's take, a look at, uh, let's take a look at our activities for this week. So it looks like we've got four days, and then we've got a press interview, and then we move into the season break. So let's see how we want to split up these four days here. We've got uh, a couple of threes. There is a one to work on driver acclaim, or we could do the two twos. So this is good to work on race craft of our, our boy Nick. It's going to work on the aero team, aero department focus, power equipment upgrade. It's going to give us resource points. That actually sounds pretty good. Uh, I'm going to say I, I think I think that's going to be that's going to be the best option. We're going to go with power equipment upgrade, and then since it fits, we'll just do that. It's not anything that I'm really too excited about. Now let's take a look at facilities here. So we've got 4.05 million dollars, which is a uh, a pretty hefty chunk of change for sure. Um, really, I, I, part of me wants to work on this personnel analysis suite here. Second driver experience stat will slightly improve. The thing is, I, I don't know like how much of an improvement that is. You know what I mean? Like I, I'd like something concrete to, to know exactly what's changing. So we may wait on that for a minute. It is $3 million. So it's kind of expensive. Obviously chassis is our next main focus that I really want to start working towards. Could increase the number of simultaneous upgrades, the speed of our upgrades, the failure rate of the upgrades. What do you guys think? I'm going to say, should we do quality control? Part of me really wants to get the fabrication upgrade so we can get two simultaneous developments. But I'm not sure if we're really going to be using that anytime soon. Because we, I mean, we're, if, we're, if we've got three weeks off, we're not going to have many, uh, we're not going to have many resource points that we're going to be coming out with. But screw it, we'll, we'll go for it, whatever. I, I feel like, I feel like that's going to be good to have in the long term. So we'll, we'll just go with that. We've got 1.5 million left. It's not going to be able to get us anything in chassis. We could get um, a fitness center. Ra uh, racecraft and awareness of our second driver improved. I'm not really too worried about that as of right now. Obviously, power, we're not going to be able to do anything. Durability, we could upgrade a couple things here, but I'm also not too worried about that. And we don't have enough there, so we're just going to save our money. So that, uh, that looks good to me in terms of R&D. I guess we could take a look at our tree. We are going to focus on chassis. So it looks like the suggested one is going to be the engine cover distribution. It's going to be a major weight redistribution here. It's going to be a pretty big, pretty big change. So 31% failure chance going to cost us 1,100 points. That is expansive, but we're going to go for it. Advance our timeline here, and uh, we just got to make it through the, uh, make it through the break, baby. Wastegate actuator was a, a success there for our chassis, so that's pretty good. And now we've got a press interview. The press interview scheduled with Will Buxton. He is waiting for you in the press area. So let's go ahead and go to the interview, and see what he's got for. Well, it's great to be back at your headquarters, and I've got to say, an awful lot's changed since we were last here. Let's dive in with some questions. We've been invested! At the moment, you seem to be a solid mid-tier team. What do you think will take your team to the next level? Uh, I'm going to say, I, I think Chassis is our next focus here. We've got some great developments in line for that. Your second driver really seems to be improving at a rapid pace. How dedicated are they? Um... I guess we'll give them a compliment. The amount of time they've been preparing off track is admirable. I don't, I don't think he's that. You've that got great, one though. of the top teams in the constructors' championship. What's your secret to scoring those points? I'm gonna say it's probably our power unit. To be honest, it's one of the best out there. We got a You've Mercedes engine. You've managed to get your team into a good position. How long do you think it will be before you can challenge the big three? With help from our sponsors, we should be able to make some breakthroughs. Look at that. Your sponsor has given you a bonus. Your We're just fishing for money, baby. Win in Formula One. Is this a sign of things to come? Uh, I'm going to say with the chassis like ours, there's going to be plenty more wins. So we're going to give our chassis department a little shout since that was, that's what we're It's been wonderful to spend kind of some time on. with you. Best of luck out on track. 
Not the most exciting thing there. I feel like for the one where we answered the engine was the key, we should have set our chassis. Like, it, it, we should be focusing on answering and, and getting the morale up of the department Morning, we're currently working this on. This week's income from the sponsors has cleared, and we're making good profit against our running costs. Sounds good to me. I appreciate that. So we're just going to go ahead and advance to the season break here. As there isn't another race for a while, we'll be closing down the Team HQ into the next race, next race weekend. All right. So, uh, man, it looks like our streamlined suspension arms upgrade in the air department failed right there. That's not good. So now we've got uh, three days until the Belgian Grand Prix. I'm going to say let's do some aero team building is going to be what I'm going to do there. It looks good to me. R&D. Let me check out this tree. Oh, we had two things fail. Ooh, that is not good. So I'm going to see what's, what's the failure chance if we try to do this 0% now. So let's go ahead and develop that upgrade. Can we get this one as well? I don't think we're going to have enough points. We don't have enough resource points. Shoot. Gotta hate when you fail. Hate it even more when you double fail. That was not good. We've got $2.58 million we can invest. Let's do build time. Whatever. Sounds good to me. Like I said, our next focus is going to be on chassis. So we're, uh, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. So there it is. It looks like... Uh, Looks like that's going to be a wrap on the off season. I thought the team was going to be working all through all three of those weeks. We were going to have tons of, of off time to work on improving our, our facilities and everything, but uh, still not too bad. That was uh, that was some, some good stuff right there. So we're headed to uh, to Spa here. Such an, an iconic track, such a big track. Going to have some crazy corners with Urus and, and Radion. Is that how you say it? Radion? Radion? Something like that. Whew. Flat out, straight up through that corner. Oh. This is going to be a blast. So practice went pretty well. We uh, we had a good run at it. Had to go through two practices since this, this track is one of the bigger ones. The lap times take a while. We couldn't complete all of our challenges all in one. But uh, this is this right here is my favorite section of any, any track that we're going to race on, dude. Oh, my goodness. Just going up this hill. Woo. Beautiful work there. You got to be really careful. You can't get too finicky. Can't can't overcorrect in that section. You can spin out and uh, have some disastrous consequences. That's for sure. Rest in peace to Antoine Hubert. But um, yeah, so after that section, that was all flat out, super easy. You know, we're we're gonna be able to be able to keep up with the best of them through there. Ooh, we got this long right hand with the braking section. Got to watch out for. This is where it gets a a bit more technical but I think that top section with the DRS zone and everything I, I think that that might help us out quite a bit in this race you know even if we're a little bit slower through this back side of the track obviously being able to be able to uh, you know pass people and keep up a ton of speed through that that top side is going to be beneficial to us so it looks like we've dropped to P8 here Whew. Not doing too bad. This section's pretty fun too. This is where you kind of get back on the gas. Definitely got to be careful about this section right there. You don't want to get up on that curb. It'll it'll spin you out. And we end things off here with a chicane, which is the most complicated section of the track. Probably our slowest section. And it looks like we are going to end things out with a P7. We'll take it, baby. It's not too bad going to be able to work with that so it's going to be interesting to see how it works out I, I definitely think through the turns and the corners and stuff on that that middle section of the track we're going to be a little bit slower but I think through the straights when we're flat out obviously with our Mercedes engine and all of our work on our arrow and stuff like that finished. we it's might be a little bit quicker I've got an interview here qualify that far up the grid um, you know, I'm going to say show off our engine's power. Our powertrain department's going to notice that. Well for you today. Couldn't pimp any of our other, you know, departments, so we might as well make one of them feel good. Do you feel that things went well for us today? Uh, I'm going to say the stars align and everything went our way. We're feeling pretty good. What was the secret ingredient for your performance today? I'm going to say the car was perfectly balanced. Let's give a little shout out to that chassis department. We got that big part Appreciate coming in. Your time. If you boost up their morale, it gives you bonuses with like less of a chance to, to fail and stuff like that. So it does look like Alex Albon was able to outqualify us there. We've got two races remaining in this rivalry and we are four points down. I just I don't I don't I don't think we're gonna be able to do anything about that. I don't think we're gonna be able to be able to track him down, but it's okay. We're gonna be alright. We're just gonna keep uh 
you know, keep our heads held high and keep trying to do our thing. Hopefully next time they give us easier options for us to take on. I feel like we're kind of at a weird spot. Somebody like Signs or Ricardo or something like that is kind of like the best case scenario for us to, to have as a rival. Um, we aren't All quite right. I think we can call that a successful qualifying. We should be in with a good chance in the race. Now, interesting enough, you guys can see the race does have a chance of rain here. It's actually, it's supposed to be raining at the start of the race. And then midway through, we're going to end up with uh, with some drying out of the track. And I think the sun's even going to come out at the end of it. So this is going to be interesting. We're going to have to have some, some different strategies here. We're going to see... What happens? Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the Take race it easy that gave the us the maiden don't, don't victory for the Jordan team in 1998. And in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. Spa Francorchamps then, a 4.35 mile tour of the Ardennes countryside with nine right corners and 10 left corners, giving us a grand total of 19. Average lap speeds in the dry can reach about 145 miles per hour, but without a significant improvement in these conditions, we won't be seeing anything like that today. I mean, it's supposed to improve, I don't know. Mr. Announcer Man, it's, uh, at least that's what Jeff told us. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do, don't let me down. <laughs> All right, well, good talk then. Uh, so we've, oh, I mean, I was going to say, we don't have a plan to swap things out, but I guess that makes sense. This first corner is going to be a big one here, fellas. Got a, a very sharp right-hand hairpin here. Technically, we are kind of on the inside, so we're going to see what we can do. Hopefully, we can can kind of try to break a little bit late and maybe try to gain a position or so. I don't know. We don't want to be too far on the inside. We've got to set ourselves up for this straight. Looks like we're going to end up dropping back a position, but that's not the end of the world. Oh, shoot. Here we go. All right. So we've got Uruj into Radion here. We're going to be able to do this without spinning out. Kind of took it a little bit wide, I'm not going to lie. Just, just went, went the safe route. It's okay. We're going to go overtake mode here. Try to prevent Ricardo from going around us. Looks like he's going to try to make a move, but he's going to pull back into line. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, ooh, dude, the visor is fogging up here. Never really thought about that. Think about if you were like, you know, if it was hot outside and you were kind of sweating a little bit and then you've got the cold rain on the outside with your sweat on the inside. I feel like we're really getting a lot of, a lot of fog here, but we're going to see, we're going to see what we can do. You know, decent, decent start. Would have liked to, to stay up at P7, but it's not the end of the world. We might be able to catch back up and really who, who knows how the rest of the race is actually going to end up panning out. I mean, hopefully we have some dry segments it kind of seems like our strategy is just going to be to run on these enters for as long as we can and if the weather ends up letting up we're gonna swap back on over to the slicks so really just want to kind of stay as close as we can to, to checko here mr paris obviously drs is not going to be available in conditions like this but uh, eventually they may open it back up so we just want to try to keep as close as possible i've got overtake on Let's go ahead and take it off. This corner's making me a little bit nervous. Not bad. We're hanging in there. Not gonna lie, I am a little bit sad. I feel like it would have been fun to have a totally dry spa just because it's such an insane, insane track. I feel like we really could have. Alright, let's focus now for the rest of the race. Really could have done something. I'm gonna go for a pass here, dude. Kind of dive bomb that corner a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I thought we were gonna be able to get slowed down in time, but it's a little bit too slick. But hey, we got the pass. We'll take it. Stewards are gonna take a look at that one. Probably not their their favorite man out there right now, but it's all right. Do we? We gotta hit that corner harder. He's probably gonna try to go back around us with this slipstream here. Woo, be careful, Trev. Don't get over to the grass there. Worry about what's in front of you, not what's behind you. The thing about the rain is like, especially with an F1 car with your downforce and your, your, you know, intermediate tires that are made for this kind of thing, you're going to be better off if you, if you really stick to your guns. Like even if you're going super fast and it seems like you're going to, you're going to end up losing it, you're worse if you try to let off or even worse break. Like you, you, you kind of want to make a decision, you just want to stick with it. You can't make any major adjustments. You can't really let off the gas in certain areas here. 
You just kind of gotta, gotta pick what you're gonna do and stick with it, and that's gonna be your best chance. Obviously, you wanna kinda, kinda ride that line to get the most speed possible, but any major adjustments in the rain are gonna, gonna end in disaster, that's for sure. The second left has gotten a little bit sketchy. We could hit this at, at full speed and, and quali and stuff and in practice, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift off just a little bit there just to be safe. I'd, I'd rather be, rather be, be safe than sorry. So we're back up at a P7, which is where we started, which is not, uh, not bad. Got a little bit loose there, but we're gonna be fine. I think we save our overtake mode through here. A lot of people think Uruj is the big right-hander. This left right here is actually Uruj, and then this this guy is Radeon, Radeon, something like that. I'm not really sure how to say it. But it seems to be working for us if we stay off of overtake mode, up through there, and then go on to overtake once we get to the top of the hill. This is a pretty gnarly DRS section. Lots of passes happen along that back stretch and the, uh, the the breaking point after it. So if it ends up dry, drying up a little bit, that might be where we can make up a bit of time and start to come back a bit. Dude, even these downhill sections are sketchy in the rain. Obviously, older these tires get, the less less handling, less control we're gonna have. Getting awfully close to the wall there, dude. This. I mean, this is not easy. It's not an exciting race thus far. Don't think the line is really dry enough yet to start thinking about slicks. Let's hold on to the inters for a while longer. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate you, Jim. You just let me know when you think it's uh, it's it's looking good again. I do see some some potential blue skies maybe starting to poke out of the the clouds in some areas. So hopefully that ends up being the case. We're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a loss of power. Always with the engine problems, Jeff. All right. We're going to keep an eye on it. So I think that turn back there, I'm pretty sure that's where you go into the pits. It's it's right side, like in the middle of that chicane rather than going all the way around the chicane through the second turn. Uh, I believe that's where you enter the pits. I mean, it is definitely starting to lighten up a bit. I don't Part of me just wants to maybe go for a bit of a bold strategy. We'll lift off a little We've bit a through here. Spare energy. Use your overtake button. Well, you're telling me the ICU's messed up, and then you're telling me to use more of the overtake button, so I'm not really sure where you're going here. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to maybe like... The to the car ahead is 2.2 seconds. Pull a Haas from the last race in real life. Switch to the slicks earlier than everyone else. I mean, it's not really the same thing because they switched before the race started. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe trying to undercut a majority of the, the pack here in front of us. I just don't want to do it too early that it ends up completely messing up our race. We should probably just listen to our engineers, but it's tempting. We've got seven laps to go. Which is not a lot of time, but it... Like, we, we don't even have rain on our visor anymore, dude. I mean, as I... As I say that, we're sliding around that corner in the wetness, but I don't know. It's starting to, to maybe become a question. Like, we're, we're setting PBs here. Sector 1 and Sector 2 are our best sectors so far. I don't know, dude. Woo! Hang in there, Trev. We'll see if anybody else goes in. Nobody else... I'm, I'm for sure going in next lap. Talk to me about the tires, Jeff. I really want to know. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm, I'm, you know, jumping the gun a little bit here, but it's it's starting to feel pretty good. I know there's ways to talk to him, so like we can we can do this. I could say, uh, what's my tire? Consensus in the garage is that it's probably about time for the slick tire now. It will be slippery, but it will probably be quicker. Okay, then I'm gonna say let's. Uh, oh, shoot, wrong button. Shoot, 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 shoot. I'm in the wrong menus now, dude. Bro, messing around with these menus has massively, massively slowed me down. What'd you say? We'll receive you at the end of this lap. Okay, uh, so let me set soft the tires. Soft tires at the next pit stop. Didn't have my, my pit line set up for me? It, it didn't have me going in there. Please put me on the softs. Make sure you put me on the softs. Can I, can, I can't change anything now, it's too late. Put me on the sauce. If you don't put me on the sauce, I'm going to be mad. I want to be the first one in. I want to try to undercut everyone. I, I just, I want to get back out there. What do you have? 
They've got the softs out. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Nick in the pits. Exit now. You'll be racing as you leave the pits. Release, release. Here we go. After these tires now, we want to finish the race on this compound. Sounds good to me. We got five laps to go. Are we coming out in front of Hamilton? Is that what that just said? Did we just undercut? What what happened? Did he have a bad pit stop or something? Hamilton is behind us, dude. That makes no sense, but let's let's go for it. All right. Under tuck, under, under, undercut strategy, under tuck. Is that what I just said? Whoa! Dude, what was that? Bit of damage to our right front wing. But we're just gonna have to deal with it. Oh my goodness, man. Come on, come on, come on, people. Come on. These guys on the enters are just looking like schmucks out here what was that all about we kind of we kind of muscled our way through there i'm not gonna lie but i just i feel like we're on a bit of a heater right now i feel like we're in in good shape and i'm i just want to get out there i've been looking forward to to getting out there and, and making this happen Whew. that was kind of fun dude i i think they were gonna put me on the softs on lap six obviously we kind of forced the hand a little bit i had asked them to box this lap and they confirmed it and then they didn't they didn't have the, the, the like, guideline taking me there. I'm not sure what that was about. Oh, this is going to be so satisfying, dude. We can just come all the way through here now. Full flat out. Are you kidding me? Whew. Nothing like an F1 engine. Just full beans, bro. Throwing the whole Goya at him. All right. So that's got to be a personal best sector three. That's a track best sector three right there. That's what I'm talking about. Let's let's start really. Gap to teammate behind is 18.6 seconds. Let's start really giving it to him. I'm gonna even use a little bit of overtake here just to get us get us accelerated. We're gonna come in through here. See, I'm nervous about that. I don't I don't think we're really supposed to go on that side of the line, but. I just want to be, I want to be as safe as possible. I don't want to end up spinning out or anything. We're going to get more aggressive with it as we go along. PB sector one for us right there. Dude, this feels so much better on the softs. Get these babies up to temp and we should have a good, a good couple of laps coming up ahead of us. And then they're going to start falling apart a little bit too. So we got to be careful not to push them too hard. But we're, we're looking pretty good here. It's just, dude, it's so much more enjoyable than in the wet. Because all these corners, you can just keep it pinned down and just slowly maneuver your way through them. It feels so good. This next section, honestly, I mean, I really like Urus and, and that... that big Radion turn or whatever you want to call it but this section here where you're building up all through that there's five laps of fuel remaining throw on your overtake mode we should probably put rich mix on screw it dude we're 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 giving it everything we've got coming through here like this like that is just insane back off a of rich mix don't want to tear up our engine too bad Whew. that's gonna be a new pb right there and maybe track best let's go for it Oh yeah. Okay, gap ahead is 4.7 seconds. 4.7 seconds. I've been saving my fuel mix this entire time just because I really wanted to to use it. Oops, shoot, use it in the dry. It wouldn't really make sense to use rich mix in the wet. Oh, that section is so tough. That wasn't bad though. Let's get our overtake mode on, use some of this ERS. We got three laps to go. We're three and a half in front of Verstappen. 4.4 behind Albon. I don't think that's gonna, I don't think that's gonna happen. I wonder, did, did Red Bull, how, how did we leapfrog everyone that bad? Did they, did everyone try to send everyone into the pits at the same time and they just got caught up or? Honestly, I'm not even sure what happened. We just set the, the track Best sector in sector one right there. This sector two is nothing to write home about, but this track completely changed. Completely changed as soon as it got dry. It feels so good now. I just, oof. That wasn't good. I was gonna say, I just live for this. But then we got out in the grass. I mean, it, it could have been a, a lot worse, that's for sure. Track best sector one, personal best sector two, that sector three is not gonna be. Oh, it's a personal best. All right. I didn't think it would be, but I guess it was. Whew. 
We got two to go, fellas. The turbocharger is on its last legs. Let's try to keep mileage on it to a minimum. To be honest, I don't even think I'm going to use our, our rich mix here. I don't think it's worth it. I mean, Verstappen's catching us little by little. We're going to use our ERS. But I, I just, I don't, I mean, we are going to catch up five seconds in front of us, and it's it's not worth destroying the engine. I think we're just going to play it safe, and, and we'll use it if we have to defend against Verstappen, but that's that's about it. He is catching up very quickly. He's going to be in DRS range in that last lap. Oof. Making me, uh, making me real nervous that's back there. Oh, that's Hamilton, actually. Maybe we do want to use our rich mix here. I really don't want to blow our engine up, but I also don't want to get past. I'd like to get this... This P4 if we can. He's passing us for sure, dude. He's he's angry back. Oh, they're both catching us. What is happening? Has the lead. How are they so much faster than us? I felt like we were doing pretty good through there. All right, we're, we're rich. We're flat out here. We're flat out here. Be careful about that. Back it all off. They're not going to pass us through the okay, chicane, I would hope. Perez. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. Interesting. I'm going to use a little bit of overtake mode here. Nope, they're not going to be able to get around us. All right. We're leading our teammate by 23.6 seconds. That's our slowest lap there. I'm really slamming on the brakes here because I'm trying to wait till the last minute. They're definitely passing us. They're both going to pass us on this straight because they're both going to have DRS. we got to have the best Urus we've had and, and Radeon. There it is, full full beans all the way through, rich mix, overtake mode, not even going to be close, dude. If we break late enough, we might be able to challenge him around the second corner. Ooh. Shoot, he got around us. I feel bad. We, we, we kind of we kinda covered a little bit too hard there anyway. All right. We're going to be, oh, shoot, we overdid that too. Not today, Max Verstappen. Shut him out, Trev. Overtake with the rich mix. Yes, sir. There it is. That was good clean racing right there. He's going to be able to pass us on that back straight, though. I don't even know why we're trying to defend here. It's 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 not gonna it's not gonna happen. These guys are both going to get us. Whew, they are. Here I was thinking I was going to be able to get a top five. It's not going to happen. I don't know. I feel like we maybe could have fought Hamilton better there, so who who knows what happens. I'm going to go Rich Mix with the ERS deployed here. I hope he can't pass us. I don't think he'll be able to. He's getting close. All right. We're almost out of ERS. I'm going to take it off. Take it off Rich Mix. Try to protect on this chicane here. Dude, this is going to be dangerous. This is your final I need as much ERS saved up as possible right here for the straight after Urush and Radion. How many times am I going to say those two words? It's just, it's one of the, the corners of F1 that I know. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Full beans all out. Come on. Oh, he's going around us. He's so fast, dude. There goes a piece of my wing. I was going to try to sneak up the outside, but he covered it off. There was no space there for me. 100%. 100% on me, without a doubt. All right. So we started P7. We went to P8. We fought back to P7. We undercut to P4. And then we ended at hopefully P6. As long as Danny Rick doesn't make a move. He is three and a half seconds behind, even though we don't have the downforce of that front wing. I uh, I think I think we're gonna be able to be able to starve him off. We've got all the rich mix and we're saving up ERS for a final battle if we need it. But do that, I mean that was that was a good race. I really enjoyed that. I liked the mix. I liked having to make the call to come in and pit. Ultimately that early pit I do feel like did help us out. Obviously, we ended up gaining a position, so we can be happy about that. I'm a little bit nervous about this, this corner coming up here. I might lift off a bit just because we don't have that front wing. I just I don't, I don't want anything crazy happening. 
So let's go ahead and back this off. We're down into lean fuel. We don't need lean. Just come around here. Easy does it. And that's going to be a P6. We'll take it. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. In the front part of the midfield, you know, it's it's not, not the worst thing in the world. Esteban Ocon ends up getting driver of the day. Unfortunately, that's not going to do anything for us in our rivalry against Albon. Let's see how our boy Nick did. So it looks like Charles was on top, Valtteri behind him. Alex Albon did a great job. He started in sixth and then moved up to third. I almost feel like he would have been uh, a better, better suit for driver of the day. Lewis started in third, dropped to fourth. Max stayed where he was. We came in at sixth. Nick got 18th, P18. So not, not great, but it's better than 20, 21, or 22 like our old guy was getting. So I'm, I'm still I'm still happy with how he's been doing. Alex Albon is straight smoking his dog. He's, I, every time I feel good about myself, he, he makes me feel much, much worse. But um, that's all right. Looks like the team is almost leveled up to 12. We hit all three of our tick marks for our sponsors, which is gonna be another 900K on the weekend. And uh, we are gonna be heading back to the team HQ. We are gonna be moving on to week 15 of 22. Our race 15 of 22 on the year. We're really starting to get down towards the end. And uh, I don't know. I, I guess we'll we'll see what happens. So I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys tomorrow at Monza.